Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out on a very cold night to the nomination workshop for the 2024-2025 Peterborough Arts Awards. This is a program delivered by the Electric City Culture Council, or EC3. We're thrilled to have all of you here tonight. We hope you nominate artists in our city, arts supporters and arts catalysts who could be curators or theatre managers, anybody who supports the arts. It's a terrific program. We're very fortunate to have it sponsored by um, a number of donors, um, corporate sponsors, and all of it is coordinated by Lil Bill Lockington at LLF Lawyers. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have with us tonight two winners of Peterborough Arts Awards, Melody Thomas, who many of you will know, she's a very famous singer in our city, and Bo Dixon, also a very famous singer in our city and elsewhere, very different kinds of music. Bo, I think, um, won for probably a wide range of things, his acting, his playwriting, and his music, and Melody is uh, a really accomplished opera singer and teacher, um, she also sang Red Red Robin for us on the second year of Arts Awards, which was a favorite song of mine at the time, and she indulged all of us in a beautiful rendition of this song. So tonight, these two very accomplished artists are gonna to talk to us about how they came to be nominated, what it was like um, at the Mayor's Luncheon for the Arts, receiving the award, and I hope a little bit about what it meant to them to have their peers designate them um, as accomplished achievers of excellence in their category. Um, Melody, I think you would have been an emerging artist, was that right? And Bo, were you senior or? or I was mid-career. Mid-career artist. So we have two really accomplished artists here who've carried on their practice. The last time the Arts Awards happened was in 2019. We took a hiatus during COVID and uh, put out all our COVID programs. So it's my pleasure to introduce Melody Thomas. And Melody, can you tell us a bit about how you came to be nominated? Absolutely, thank you so much for having me here, Sue. Um, I was nominated for the um, Emerging Artist Award in 2018. Uh, I wish I could remember how I discovered the Arts Awards themselves, but I remember when I heard that uh, EC3 was launching this project and I what thought, well, I, I'm an emerging artist, and I read the, the nomination criteria and discovered that I couldn't nominate myself, but I thought I would be a good fit for this, so I reached out to um, a good friend of mine, um, Melissa Watherspoon, who is um, also uh, an arts educator and an artist. She dabbles in a var variety of, of media, um, but I reached out to her, I sent her the link, and and said, do you, do you think you might be willing to, to go to bat for me? And she went, hands down, absolutely, you would be such a great fit for this, wrote me the most glorious um, letter, um, really championed my nomination, and, and we worked together to put together a package of stuff that, that showed off what my um, emerging career I had to offer, especially to Peterborough. I feel like a, a big part of what I tried to lean into in my application was not just my work as an artist, but my work as an artist and how it relates to our community. Mm -hmm. um, and that that clearly served me. <laughs> served you well. So who did the actual writing? Melissa wrote wrote me a beautiful letter. Okay. Um, she did ask me, um, and I feel like this is probably helpful for all nominees and nominators. She she did ask me for a lot of information. She's like, I want to, I really want to understand the scope of the work that you do. Tell me about your teaching. Tell me about your most important performances. Tell me about your goals as an okay. artist. Tell me about. And she kind of took all this understanding of my of my career thus far, that what I had achieved so far, where I planned to go, um, my impact of on the community, because she, she was sort of familiar with some of the things that I had done peripherally through my socials and whatnot, but she's like, I really want to understand what I'm representing when I talk about your arts experiences in your letter. Um, so she, she did a really good job of working to like understand, like I wasn't feeding her things to say. She's like, I want to understand what I'm saying so that I can um, I can champion you rather than just filtering. I, I, she's like, I don't want to just um, repeat your words in this letter. I really want to know who you are as an artist. And, and her letter really reflected that. That I feel like she, she really made an effort to see and understand 
how I interacted with the Peter Rourke community. I remember the nomination well. It was re very authentic and it brought you to life for the jury. It is a peer um, assessed program, so it's all other artists and arts administrators and curators who um, sit on that jury. It's one jury for all of, all of the awards. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's a good start for people, I think. Bo, how about you? You, you? We were just recalling who nominated you. Yes, and it was Lindy Finley from Fourth Line Theatre. And to be honest, I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware that I that she nominated me. Um, and but I am flattered, and uh, it's nice to know that um, she uh, was championing me as well. Um, yeah, and so my experience, the first, so I actually couldn't be there because I was. Uh, acting at Neptune Theater uh, in Halifax, oh, Halifax right. and so I, um, I was the the artistic director said you can go because I have an understudy for you, and it was I was so tempted to come for the awards ceremony, but um, the show must go on. I decided to stay, and I sent a video. A uh, very fun video, and I got the cast involved, and we filmed me singing Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher. And uh, I, it was funny because my sister, Lisa, accepted it on my behalf, and she was there, and she filmed the, she filmed it live, the video. The video. Because Bo got the whole cast to sing that song with him. Yeah, the, the cast of Color Purple. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. That was I'd a like kind of a funny only in Canada story in the sense that we actually had a sponsor who offered to fly Bo back and forth, but transportation to Halifax between Toronto and Halifax was so bad we couldn't get you in and out fast enough. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, being an artist, he came up with a very creative solution <laughs> for his acceptance yeah. speech. Yes. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I did that because the cast of The Color Purple, being from Calgary, Halifax, and Toronto, Edmonton, they didn't really know about Peter Rowe. And so it was great for them to get an understanding of what the uh, awards, what the awards ceremony was all about and to instill a bit of the Peterborough arts community into Halifax and to spread that, that love was, uh, it was, it was important to me and I'm, I'm glad that uh, it all worked out. You could certainly feel the love in the video, that's for sure. Yeah. I have to say that for a city our size, we're really fortunate to have an arts um, awards program like this. Uh, the Electric City Culture Council was founded as the signature recommendation of the 2012 Municipal Cultural Plan and the first two things that it charged the Arts Council with doing, the first is advocacy to fight for the arts, which we worked with the social services community this year and just recently stopped the 25% cuts to everybody's grants, which the whole community can take credit for even though we did the organizing. Um, people were amazing. And uh, the second one was to have an arts awards program. So Bill Kimball, the chair of EC3 and I, um, thought we needed a private sponsor to make this happen. So we went off to see Bill Lockington at LLF Lawyers. And um, I think we said four words to him and he said, I can't believe we don't have an arts awards program. We have sports awards and business awards and donut awards. How can we not have an arts awards? And he, um, he got on the phone to Daryl Bennett, who was the mayor at the time, and within five minutes, we had it signed, sealed, and delivered. And within three days, Bill had all of the sponsors. So every award um, has a sponsor attached to it who puts up the cash money. Um, and I can't remember, maybe Gabe will remember better than I do how, how many applicants, but it's a pretty robust competition both both years the jury had a tough time deciding yeah I don't have the specific numbers but I know that that it's it's quite a number each year yeah 
we've had really good response over the over the time. Yeah. So we wanted to have two award winners here. Can you tell us maybe what has it meant to you going forward to have that? Is it something you put on your CV or? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I have the uh, I have the award itself hanging in the under my degrees and my certificates in the front hallway of my house, so everyone that comes in can can see. But yeah, it was um, it was in 2018, and I remember the the kind of year leading up to that. There was a lot of challenges going on in my life so this was like a real a real pick me up like felt like oh I, I felt I felt seen I felt valued by my community at a time that was really hard and um, as is often the way when people buy their first houses at the time it was May when the uh, when the late show was yes well um, at the end of August I ended up buying my first house which in May I didn't know that that was gonna happen and so that two thousand dollars that came from the award definitely helped me inch closer to, to buying a house at the end of August because being being under 30, female, single, self-employed in the arts, like the, the bank was not in my favor, but, uh, but that definitely helped inch me closer to that. And I, I feel really fortunate now because I, I know that, you know, owning real estate as a, you know, an artist in this current, in the current economic climate is, is challenging. So that, that really, um, it, it was definitely helped me inch closer to that, which I feel really proud of the award and that, that it helped me achieve that. Which was it? Because you've had your studio in your house. Yep. Really important goal. Super important to I, work. Yeah. I love our awards for that reason because the artist can use the money for whatever makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. Bo, how about you? You're a Dora Maver Moore Award winner. Um, that's a that's that's a big deal. A Dora Maver Moore Award. Where where did the Peterborough Arts Awards fit into your life? Um, I don't have it framed yet. The certificate. <laughs> because I just haven't gotten around to getting the right size. But I do uh, hold that, I do have that on my mantle and um, I hold it dear to me um, for a number of reasons. Peterborough, I consider to be home. Uh, and, um, you know, I have to be totally transparent. The mid-career title kind of was like, oh, <laughs> hmm. Does that mean that I'm old or in, in limbo, sort of <laughs> mid? I haven't arrived. I haven't succeeded quite yet. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. And uh, it actually motivated me. Um, you know, I sort of saw it also as an emerging award more than mid-career in the sense that uh, I had momentum at the time. Mm -hmm. And I still have momentum. But um, it, that really helped push me forward and gave me the confidence and just the acknowledgement that, you know, Peterborough, my hometown, appreciated me for my work. And, um, yeah, I hold that uh, next to um, the Dora Awards. You know, it's, it really varies, you know, in certain parts of Canada. It's like... Uh, the doors mean nothing uh, in the theater industry and then for some for others uh, it means a great deal and so I, I don't undervalue it whatsoever but um, in some ways I I really value the Peterborough the Emerging Artist Award even more so than the Dora because it is home uh, it is, I received it at home and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. The, the arts, working in the arts is very tough. And so to get that acknowledgement in a small arts community uh, feels like uh, you're really penetrating, you're getting somewhere, mm -hmm. as opposed to a larger, you know, a metropolitan area where it's like, well, they have the funds for it. They they have the resources. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's it's very meaningful, and um, it gave me. It's it's a symbol. The certificate is a symbol of hope, and of uh, and not only recognition, but just. Um, it, it fuels me to push forward. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. That's what that's what we hope for. I know that. Um, in 2019, we were able to raise enough money so that um, there are three people nominated that um, 
are on the short list. So when we go into the awards the day of the luncheon, we have videos of the three nominated people, but we don't announce the winner until the lunch itself. The runners up now get a cash award and a certificate as well. And I know that Alicia Rubishaw, a very great writer who lives in town, she always tells us that she puts it right in front of her desk whenever she's writing a grant application and tells herself, I can do this, I can do this, and I'm gonna get this grant. So it does have a, a metaphorical value too that keeps people going. Okay, I wanna thank you both for the personal recollections and meanings, and now we're gonna run through the technical side of the program. Um, Take notes by all means, but this PowerPoint will be available on the EC3 website and so will the, the video. So uh, take it away, Gabe. Um, we haven't done the territory of acknowledgements, if we want to do that as well. Um, I can pull those up. Um, so for the territorial acknowledgements, we respectfully acknowledge that the land on which we work and gather is in the traditional territory and the Michisaga Anishinaabe home to the Williams Treaty's First Nations, who have been the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters for countless generations. We support them in this work, which they continue to this day. We're grateful to be here and pledge to listen and learn from traditional Indigenous knowledge and ways. EC3 is committed to doing all that we can to further efforts at real truth and reconciliation, which includes providing support to the artistic work of Indigenous artists, examining the ways we do this, and providing a space and a platform for Indigenous voices to be heard and respected. Thanks, Gabe. We're doing a workshop on territorial acknowledgements in, uh, in January, led by Sarah Lewis, Peterborough's first, and hopefully not last, poet laureate. No, sorry, Caesar was last year. She did a great job, too. OK, so the Arts Awards um, were initially established as annual awards. We're hoping it will continue um, on an annual basis going forward. And we have sketched out there the basic categories. So there are the three awards, Emerging Mid-Career and Senior Artists that go to individual creators um, in any discipline, in any art form, contemporary or traditional. And then we have an award dedicated specifically to Indigenous artists and two um, supporting role awards, um, both of which um, for Arts Supporter and Arts Catalyst, there is a cash prize, but the winner donates that money to an arts organization of their choice. Um, they're $2,000 each for the winners and $250 for the runners up prizes. And now, thanks to a special donor and the agitation of Justin Million, the poet, every um, nominated artist also gets a free drink ticket at the lunch. <laughs> Um, so the nomination process, as um, our guests were telling to us, does involve two people, a nominator and a nominee. I think that some people are nominated without much contact by their nominator. They just have to sign off at the very end. And other people work hand in hand with their, with their nominator and, and vice versa. Either way is fine. The only thing to remember is there are no self-nominations. Um, you can be nominated by anybody that you work with professionally in your practice, but the regular kinds of conflict of interest rules that EC3 has for grants to individual artists or for jurors, it can't be a family member or someone that you're in business with, and I'm sure that probably comes up specifically on a slide. Thanks, Gabe. So we're hoping that the Mayor's Luncheon for the Arts will be February 13th at the Canoe Museum. For those of you who haven't been in that space yet, it's absolutely gorgeous and their event room has a spectacular view over the water. So we're really looking forward to that. Here's some fantastic photographs from 2018 and 2019. You can see Bo Dixon, there's Robert Winslow, there's Melody, Leanne, Brad, Krista, is that Krista English? Yes, she would have been in the uh, Catalyst um, category. And uh, there's Curtis Dreger playing out front. 
The award ceremony itself usually includes, I don't know, between six and ten artists who perform and interject throughout the, throughout the lunch and throughout the awards program. We always have a guest speaker. Uh, it was Charlie Foran, the writer, uh, last time around. Uh, he was running the, writer, running the Writer's Trust, so he's kind of an expert in what it means to uh, give and to receive awards. Thanks, Gabe. It is a juried competition, and it, as I was saying, it is a competition. So in every category, uh, the jury has, to, has a difficult decision to make because they, going forward, definitely uh, have to choose one winner and one winner only in each category. Uh, we want to thank all of the sponsors who will be involved this year in our um, be beginning years, um, Merit and uh, Kate Ramsey, there are lots of both individuals and corporate sponsors. We're just firming up the list now for uh, 2025. So we're going to go into the specific categories and how they're defined. Outstanding Emerging Artist. So that was Melody, for example, and you have to have been working professionally in your practice for at least two years. By working professionally, we mean that you're doing your work in public, you're receiving some kind of remuneration for your work, you're acknowledged by your peers, and you've completed your training, whether it's formal education or traditional education or informal education. So two years practicing in your field as an emerging artist. Mid-career artist, even though Bo was a bit nervous about being mid-career. <laughs> It is a very important phase of your practice. And I mean, the alternative is senior artist, and I don't know if you want that to be. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, five years in the practice. It can be in more than one discipline. You may have focused in on one. You may be doing a number, but you have to declare what work you're being um, nominated for when you apply, or your nom no nominator has to do that. Thanks, Gabe. So outstanding senior artists, it has nothing to do with your age. It has to do with the number of years you've been practicing. So that award goes to people who have been practicing in the field for at least 15 years. Um, you can see Robert Winslow won it one year, so he's been with the Fourth Line. He's the founder, really, of the Fourth Line Theatre for a very long time. I think 30 years now for, for Robert out um, on the Winslow farm at Fourth Line. We have a dedicated award for an Indigenous artist. So this can, is an artist practicing in any discipline um, who's an Indigenous artist. It can be contemporary practice. It can be traditional practice. We make sure that the jury has the expertise on it, uh, Indigenous artists who are familiar with those practices and can make an informed decision about who should win the award. And they have to have just been working continuously. There's no particular time frame um, within their practice in any discipline, traditional or contemporary. So the arts champion is a person who has been a big supporter of the arts. They might be a fundraiser, they might be a volunteer board member, but somebody who for a substantial period of their life have dedicated their volunteer time to the arts in some way. Um, it's given to this a prize money is given to the individual who in turn gives it to a local not-for-profit arts organization. So that's always a really moving part of the ceremony because it's two surprises in one. We name the winner of that award and then they get to say who um, they're giving it to and perhaps there's some magic that happens behind the scenes so that the representatives of those organizations are always at the lunch. The Arts Catalyst is really recognizing outstanding achievement by a professional arts administrator, manager, fundraiser, art critic, curator, somebody who works adjacent to artists, who are not identifying as creators themselves, but who work within the arts milieu to support artists and uh, creators of, in any discipline. You could be a festival programmer, you could be a film producer, anybody who's worked behind the scenes to build excellence in the arts in Peterborough. 
and um, they too give their um, award to an arts organization of their choice. So the eligibility criteria are very, very important. Gabe is the gatekeeper there. He will look at every nomination and letter from every nominee that comes in and see whether or not they actually can pass the threshold of the basic nominations. So you can see uh, there's a residential requirements, which is at the city or county of Peterborough, including Curve Lake and Hiawatha First Nations. And they have to have been living in the community for at least two years in order to nominate an individual for any of the awards. You're not permitted to nominate a family member, an employee, a student, and you may not nominate yourself, as we've mentioned a couple of times. If you have any concerns about your eligibility, you'll see Gabe's contact information at the end, and it's available on the EC3 website. Just give Gabe, Gabe an email, and he will um, go over things with you and see if you are indeed eligible. And obviously, nominators cannot sit on the jury. So it's absolutely people who are not affiliated in any way with a nominee or a nominator who sit on the jury. Right, you can only be nominated uh, for an award twice in any four-year period. I think that we're going to play that one pretty much by ear this year because we've had quite a long hiatus. So um, if you want to nominate someone or you're a potential nominee, please contact Gabe and just go over it with him. The more people that participate, the, the better. Though really, the last awards were 2019, so everybody's it took okay. over four years. Mm -hmm. like, everyone even people who have been nominated for, for the most recent session are, are still eligible. Posthumous nominations are not um, eligible in this particular program. And just in case people were concerned, no staff, board, or committee members of EC3 are, they're not eligible as, as nominees or as nominators. So we do have a very clear and technical description of who is a professional artist. This is very much in line with the Canada Council's definition, the Ontario Arts Council's definition, and the Toronto City of uh, Toronto Arts Council's definition. So I think that there is a place in which people self-define as a professional artist, but there are some technicalities as well. Some of the people in the audience, I don't know if you all have theater degrees, but you work in theater. That's what counts, is that you've worked in theater for a substantial period of time. Your work has been in front of the public and has been recognized by your peers in a number of ways. It could be because other professional artists work with you, because you've received grants, but any factors that contribute to the recognition of your work as a professional artist by your peers. Public exhibition, presentation or publication, uh, performances. Um, if you are enrolled full-time or even part-time really, but if you're in the middle of a diploma program at a community college or a university, you are not eligible for this award. Uh, yeah, so we'll go over a bit of, of the process and the nomination instructions. Um, so as we've mentioned before, the, the nomination process includes a nominator and a nominee working together. Um, that can work in a variety of ways. Uh, it is fully acceptable for someone who wishes to be nominated to do most of the work and find someone who is willing to, to nominate them, um, as long as, as both parties are, are involved and are, are, are accepting of the process. Um, the full list of nomination package documents, which we'll go over uh, shortly. Uh, that's uh, also available on the website in the program guidelines and you submit all of that together via email to peterboroughartsawards at gmail.com before the deadline which is December 16th. Um, and th this is, th the, the last point is kind of throughout this conversation but if there's ever any questions about uh, anything related to this process, any confusions, uh, we encourage people to, to reach out at any point. And that certainly includes any confusion. Also, if you're having issues with the technical side of it, with uh, putting together the documents via email, uh, if there's any accessibility issues, certainly we are, are, are more than happy to, to assist with all of that. Um, so we'll go over the, the nomination package documents uh, here. 
Uh, first is the completed and signed nomination form. Uh, it's a document which you can download off of the EC3 website uh, and you, you fill it out there. Uh, then is the nomination letter, which is uh, from the which is to kind of provide the jury with an overall sense of who this person is and what their impact has been on the Peterborough arts community. Um, this provides uh, some additional uh, 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 recommendations on that, address the assessment criteria, so take a look at, at what is specific, what the jury will specifically, specifically be looking at and uh, uh, provide an argument for this artist as, uh, as fitting within that criteria. Um, Next is the letter of support. Uh, this is a, an additional that you can, this is an option. If you have another member of the community who you think would also do a good job of speaking about this person, uh, you can provide an additional letter of support. That is optional. Some artists have people fighting to nominate them. Yeah, so. absolutely. Like sometimes there are just a lot of people Bo, who are... I think we had to restrict him to how yeah, many absolutely. people wanted to um, nominate him. Yeah. And then in addition, the, the CV, the curriculum vitae, which is uh, the kind of more formal description of what this person has done. Uh, you'll go over some of that within the nomination letter, but, but in addition, this provides the full and complete overview of, of what they've done before. Uh, and for the non-artist categories, the CV should uh, discuss their activities related to the arts, obviously. Um, uh, next are the support materials. Uh, these are required only for the artist categories. Uh, images, audio, video, text, links are, are absolutely acceptable. Uh, depending on the format, we try and uh, be as, as open as possible to however you want to submit that. So for images, JPEG, GIF, PNG, uh, PDF, any kind of format as long as it works. Uh, audio, video, for those we recommend uh, uploading them somewhere and then providing a link. SoundCloud, Bandcamp, YouTube, etc. cetera. Um, just because those documents can be very, very large. Uh, text, uh, please put all of the, the various pieces of text that you're putting in into a single document with maximum length of 10 pages. And then the final thing which seems to be hiding right at the bottom of this page is that we would also ask you to provide a high resolution digital photo of the nominee uh, which we can use in promotional materials and in a, within the awards themselves. Okay, maybe I'll just make a quick interjection there if I can. So the support material really matters. You can't assume that everybody on the jury is familiar with your work. They will come to know you through your nomination and your letter, um, but the support material really counts. We found that in the grants to individual artists this year, um, that the jury really, really wanted the quality of the support material to be as high as possible. That, assist their, their decision making. Mm -hmm. um, and also, the photo is important, but we should let you know that if you are uh, in the shortlisted three, we have a professional artist who makes a video um, that um, talks a little bit about each of the three runners, or the three shortlisted people for the awards. So you get um, a really nice video to take home with you Absolutely. as well. Yeah. And with all of these, especially with all of these file formats and stuff, if it's ever confusing any of the technical sides, please do contact us. You can send a, like, test an email out and be like, did this image come through? Is it good enough? Can you read it? Um, absolutely, we are, we're open for that. Um, after, the, after the nominations all come in and we pass the deadline, comes the selection process. Uh, so the Peterborough Arts Awards are assessed by a peer jury. Uh, the jury is composed of uh, uh, people largely within the Peterborough community. Sometimes there is, is an outsider uh, as well, depending on, on what, uh, what is available and who can speak best to, to the variety of nominations that exist. Um, we like to say that not necessarily everyone on the jury will be familiar with you or your particular practice, but there will be someone on the jury who is familiar with everyone's style of practice. We try and be representative as much as possible to the full, uh, uh, to, to the set of, of nominations that come in. Uh, the jury uh, will go through all of the awards, uh, will go through the, the um, uh, their criteria shortly, but uh, out of that, they'll select a two-person shortlist and uh, one recipient. 
Uh, and then we, we announce the shortlist, uh, including all three of them, and then the actual winner gets announced at the mayor's luncheon. Um, we always include this uh, in case where a suitable winner is not found. The Peter Barts Award jury reserves the right to make no award in a category in a given year, which is a bummer, but it can happen, and sometimes that is the option. Um, and shortlisted candidates and their nominators are each provided a ticket to the mayor's luncheon so that they can be there and celebrate in all the joy. Uh, this goes over the assessment criteria for the Peter Barts Awards. Um, the uh, jury will also, of course, determine uh, that the candidate is eligible and that fits in with that specific award. Uh, but then the three pri the criteria that we'll be looking at, uh, for all categories, they're looking at the overall public impact of the candidate's award. So what have they done within the Peterborough community? Uh, uh, what is the, the quality of their work and the, the impact that it's had within the city? For the artist categories, they're looking at the strength and merit of the candidate's artistic achievement, goals, and objectives. And then for the non-artistic art, artist categories, they're discussing their, their contribution to the development of the arts and culture in Peterborough. Uh, so, so the impact of their work and, and how, it's, how it's helped and improved the, the, uh, the city and its arts community. Uh, we also, uh, we include our, our inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility statement. Uh, EC3 is, is committed to inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility in all our programs. Uh, we encourage this throughout the process. Uh, we want nominations, for, uh, we want to accept nominations from uh, uh, candidates of, uh, of uh, uh, who are uh, self-identified members of marginalized and racialized and equity-seeking communities. Uh, we list some of those here, visible and invisible, including BIPOC artists, deaf and hard of hearing artists, artists with disabilities, new Canadians, and those artists identifying as 2S LGBTQ+. Uh, we want that both in the, in the pool of, of nominees and then also uh, for the nominators. If there's any issue with the nomination process at any point, please do uh, uh, come ahead and come forward and, and we'll provide whatever, um, um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Whatever accommodations that will be able, that are possible to do. Um, yeah, person with disabilities come forward at any stage of the nomination process to request accommodations. It's right there. <laughs> Thank you. Slides. Uh, and uh, again, please please do email us at any point if, if you require additional assistance. So, certainly some people who um, are nominated or people may want to nominate them may not have access to computers or be technologically literate with the kind of um, interface that we have, that's something Gabe can help with. He can meet with you in person. He can receive handwritten applications if necessary. We photograph them and present them to the jury. So we want to do everything we can to accommodate great artists, no matter uh, where they're practicing, and to help overcome any barriers that they may have, whether it's from an accessibility point of view or um, a diversity point of view, the jury will do everything we can to make it a very well balanced and integrated jury. If we need to seek specialized expertise, we will do that. Yeah, absolutely. We've we've worked with uh, various institutions in Peterborough and, and hooked people up with brain injury clinics and uh, Institute for the Deaf and Blind, and so that is always an option. Um, and then this is just going over the dates. Um, October 30th is when the nomination period opened. Uh, December 16th, the nominations are due. Uh, so we've still got a number of weeks left on that. And then February 13th, 2025 is the to be confirmed date of the mayor's luncheon for the arts and awards ceremony. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna go with that. Uh, would you like to go over the tips and tricks, Sue? This is a great list that we've put together that really combines things that um, different artists have suggested to us in different workshops. Kate's story, I think, built the first foundational tips and tricks list and um, start as early as you can. It always takes longer than you think. And this is a beautiful photograph from Sue Lily Dixon, who is an accessibility specialist and a great photographer. She sits on the EC3 board. And I think this was part of an Arts Week uh, pro program, this photograph. 
And this uh, really, really, it's sort of like when you were in school um, and the professor or the teacher would say, read the exam all the way through before you start answering the questions. We would really highly recommend that as well. Read the program guidelines, read the nomination eligibility criteria before you or your nominator start working on the nomination. And this is a visual artist Bethany LeBlanc piece, which I think also is an Arts Week project. And this is a Wendy Trussler piece that was part of Arts Week. Answer the actual questions that the nomination form asks. Look at the assessment criteria. And when you and your nominator are working on your letter and your nomination, try to imagine that you're speaking to the members of the jury. Answer the questions. Um, that the assessment criteria poses. Because it's very technical that we actually ask them to give a mark on each question and then it's all tabulated and then they take a look at what the um, landscape looks like. This is actually shot in the uh, Market Hall and I think that's um, it's Benedict Badukian for sure and I forget who... Is it Jen? Thank you. Jen Cole in a piece Kate Story choreographed. Uh, don't be nervous, um, don't be scared, write more than one draft of the nomination if you're working on your letter or your nominator. Um, it's a good idea to have other eyes take a look at your work before you hand it in. This is the poetry cart um, that was part of um, Arts Week, I'm sure. Oh, the word count. I don't know what, the word counts are, aren't quite so strict in this program, are they? Page counts, yeah. So it, it does matter. Um, save your work as you go. Print out a copy of both pieces. Look at them in hard copy before you um, press submit and send in the final nomination and letter. This is a, also, this is a, out behind TTOK. Um, spoken word artist and uh, be really clear and concise same as with the grant application avoid jargon speak to a jury speak to your peers um, it doesn't impress the jury that your cultural studies degree is backing you up don't use art speak i think this is uh, washboard hank and um miriam, miriam. At Art, uh, Portia Palooza, I guess, at Arts Week. Yeah, get help, get some feedback, get somebody to uh, double check and proofread, and make sure you go over that checklist that's on um, the website as part of this package. This is uh, Jen Elchuk and the gang with uh, the Flying Canoe piece that was at the Old Canoe Muse Museum. I think that's an Arts Week project too. Very important that your CV is accurate and up to date when you submit it. Thanks, Gabe. I just want to take a second and say thank you very much to um, all of our funders, including the City of Peterborough, the Ontario Arts Council, early on the Trillium Foundation, the Peterborough Foundation, the Community Foundation of Greater Peterborough, um, Ontario Arts Council is supported by the province of Ontario, and of course all the fabulous private sector sponsors who make the Arts Awards possible. So. Um, I'd like to open the floor and see if there are any questions. Did we answer your questions? Do you feel like you know what to do? The question from the audience, just for, for the mic, was uh, can you nominate more than one person? Yes, you can. Just please let it your nominees know that that's happening because they might not be comfortable with that. Um, I think um, uh, we're both kind of, this may be a question for email later, but just trying to figure out what stream you're in, sort of like whether you're uh, an emerging artist or a mid-career. Well, I think it's like a primarily arts worker. I think it falls into the other category. Mm -hmm. That's right. So people who are 
sometimes referred to as cultural workers, are, would definitely be in the arts catalyst category. But absolutely contact Gabe, he's the expert and he'll help you um, parse your way through yeah. this. And also I should note the, the versions of the descriptions that were in the presentation are shortened. There's slightly more explanation of what each category is on the official program guidelines on the website. Uh, but yeah, if you have any other questions, then, then definitely get in touch. And it was just about two things that I overheard, and I just wanted to know if I overheard them correctly. Um, so one is if, if you've received a grant for individual artists, you're not eligible? Uh, you are still eligible. Uh, yeah, it's a completely... There's no program. relationship. Oh, okay, so, so that's good. So that's what I thought I heard, but that's not a thing. That's great. Um, and the, the being enrolled in some sort of student program or like if you're going to school, does it have to be like in any kind of school, even if you're like a mature artist who's already been through your schooling, but you're, for example, the person I want to nominate is currently learning anatomy, but they're already like an established artist. That's fine. It's a really good question, Naomi. Um, I think the purpose of those regulations are to, um, to have people finish their degrees in an art practice. So somebody who's stu studying cinema studies and production or creative writing at the university level is not eligible till they've finished their degree and are out practicing. Got it. Okay. okay. So it's like, I was just taking a course on yeah. something. No, yeah. Very good yeah. So again, just for, for the microphone. So if, if you are enrolled in a program but that's not part of your artistic practice, that doesn't disqualify you. Any other questions? Um, yeah, in terms of letters of support, was there, does that go into the page count? Like, uh, so there, oh, yeah, so there's a page count specifically for each element. Okay, so uh, so there's, I believe that the letter of support is two pages maximum, but then that's separate from the, the CV, which is three pages maximum, so. so and how many letters, so the 10 pages is for text, but the, like if you had five letters of support, that's separate from those. Yeah, I believe that there's a maximum of two letters of support, right? That there's, there's your primary letter of support and then one additional if you want. And each of those could be a maximum of two pages. And um, just so I understand the art supporter one, like obviously Bill would have, Bill Lockington would be an example, but he has a complex, he's helping us. But I mean, someone like that in the community who, or, and it's an individual, right? So it'd be someone who's serving like, in a business Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody who in either their volunteer work or their professional practice has been a supporter of the arts financially, as a volunteer on boards, anything like that. So that's in the um, champion side and um, more professional practice is the catalyst side. Yeah, because um, yeah, I was thinking Oh, stay up late. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is staying up after dark. <laughs> well, listen, I, I want to thank Gabe for all the work he did getting this program happening. Mike Morritt, who's videotaping it. Um, but very special thanks to Bo Dixon, Bo Dixon and Melody Thomas, two outstanding Peterborough Arts Awards winners. I want to ask you each, would you, having gone through the process, nominate someone else? Absolutely. Absolutely. Undoubtedly, yeah. All right. So people, please get out there, nominate your favorite artist, nominate your favorite indigenous artist. Nom indigenous artists are eligible in all of the categories. I should say that. I think I forgot to say that. And uh, anyone you know who works in the practice as a supporter or as a professional um, in an arts organization. Um, thank you very much for coming. We'll see you at the awards, February 13th, 2025.